Varna, varna is a Sanskrit word which means type, order, color or class. The term refers to social classes in Brahmanical books like the Manumriti. These and other Hindu literature classified the society in principle into four varnas Brahmins, priests, scholars and teachers. Kshatriyas, rulers, warriors and administrators. Vaishyas, agriculturalists and merchants. Shudras, laborers and service providers, communities which belong to one of the four varnas or classes are called savarna. In the present day context, they include all the forward castes. The Dalits and scheduled tribes who do not belong to any varna are called a varna. This quadruple division is a form of social stratification not to be confused with the much more nuanced jati or the European term caste. The varna system is discussed in Hindu texts and understood as idealized human callings. The concept is generally traced to the Purusha Sutta verse of the Rig Veda. The commentary on the Varna system in the Manumriti is oft cited. Counter to these textual classifications, many Hindu texts and doctrines question and disagree with the Varna system of social classification. Etymology and origins Varna is a Sanskrit term. It is derived from the root ver, meaning, to cover, to envelop, count, classify, consider, describe, or choose. Compare Vertra, the word appears in the Rigveda, where it means, color, outward appearance, exterior, form, figure, or shape. The word means, color, tint, dye, or pigment, in the Mahabharata. Varna contextually means, Color, race, tribe, species, kind, sort, nature, character, quality, property of an object or people in some Vedic and medieval texts. Varna refers to four social classes in the Manumriti. The Vedas The earliest application to the formal division into four social classes without using the term varna appears in the late Rigvedic Purusha Sukta RV 10.90.11 to 12 which has the Brahman Rajanya instead of Kshatriya Vaishya and Shudra classes forming the mouth arms thighs and feet at the sacrifice of the primordial Purusha respectively this Purusha Sukta Varna verse is now generally considered to have been inserted at a later date into the Vedic text, possibly as a charter myth. Stephanie Jameson and Joel Brereton, a professor of Sanskrit and religious studies, state, "...there is no evidence in the Rigveda for an elaborate, much subdivided and overarching caste system," and, "...the Varna system seems to be embryonic in the Rigveda and, both then and later, a social ideal rather than a social reality." Ram Shuran Sharma states that, "...the Rig Vedic society was neither organized on the basis of social division of labor nor on that of differences in wealth it was primarily organized on the basis of kin, tribe and lineage." In the post-Vedic period, the Varna division is described in the Dharmashastra literature, the Mahabharata and in the Puranas. The Dharmasastras Varna system is extensively discussed in Dharma Sastras. The Varna system in Dharma Sastras divides society into four Varnas Brahmins, Kshatriyas, Vaishya and Shudras. Those who fall out of this system because of their grievous sins are ostracized as outcasts untouchables and considered outside the Varna system. Barbarians and those who are unrighteous or unethical are also considered outcasts. Recent scholarship suggests that the discussion of varna as well as untouchable outcasts in these texts does not resemble the modern era caste system in India. Patrick Olivelle, a professor of Sanskrit and Indian religions and credited with modern translations of Vedic literature, Dharma Sutras and Dharma Sastras, states that ancient and medieval Indian texts do not support the ritual pollution, purity impurity as the basis for varna system. According to Olivelle, purity and purity is discussed in the Dharma Sastra texts, but only in the context of the individual's moral, ritual, and biological pollution, eating certain kinds of food such as meat, urination, and defecation. In his review of Dharma Sastras, Olivelle writes, We see no instance when a term of pure, impure is used with reference to a group of individuals or a varna or caste. The only mention of impurity in the Shastra texts from the first millennium is about people who commit grievous sins and thereby fall out of their varna. These, writes Olivelle, are called 
fallen people, and impure, declaring that they be ostracized. Olivel adds that the overwhelming focus in matters relating to purity, impurity in the Dharma Sastra texts concerns individuals irrespective of their Varna affiliation, and all four Varnas could attain purity or impurity by the content of their character, ethical intent, actions, innocence or ignorance, stipulations, and ritualistic behaviors. Olivelle states, Dumont is correct in his assessment that the ideology of Varna is not based on purity. If it were we should expect to find at least some comment on the relative purity and impurity of the different Vamas. What is even more important is that the ideology of purity and impurity that emerges from the Dharma literature is concerned with the individual and not with groups, with purification and not with purity, and lends little support to a theory which makes relative purity the foundation of social stratification. The first three varnas are described in the Dharmasastras as twice born, and they are allowed to study the Vedas. Such a restriction of who can study Vedas is not found in the Vedic era literature. Manumriti assigns cattle rearing as Vaishya occupation, but historical evidence shows that Brahmins, Kshatriyas, and Shudras also owned and reared cattle and that cattle wealth was mainstay of their households. Ramnarayan Rawat, a professor of history and specializing in social exclusion in the Indian subcontinent, states that 19th century British records show that Shamars, listed as untouchables, also owned land and cattle and were active agriculturalists. The emperors of Kosala and the Prince of Kasi are other examples. Tim Ingold, an anthropologist, writes that the Manumriti is a highly schematic commentary on the Varna system, but it too provides models rather than descriptions. Susan Bailey states that Manumriti and other scriptures helped elevate Brahman in the social hierarchy and these were a factor in the making of the Varna system, but the ancient texts did not in some way create the phenomenon of caste in India. The epics The Mahabharata, estimated to have been completed by about the 4th century CE, discusses the Varna system in section 12.181. The epic offers two models on Varna. The first model describes Varna as color coded system, through a sage named Brigu. Brahmins' Varna was white, Shtriyas was red, Vaishyas was yellow, and the Shudras black. This description is questioned by another prominent sage Bharadvaha who says that colors are seen among all the varnas, that desire, anger, fear, greed, grief, anxiety, hunger and toil prevails over all human beings, that bile and blood flow from all human bodies, so what distinguishes the varnas, he asks. The Mahabharata then declares, according to Alf Hiltbeitel, a professor of religion, there is no distinction of varnas. This whole universe is Brahman. It was created formerly by Brahma, came to be classified by acts. The Mahabharata thereafter recites a behavioral model for Varna, that those who were inclined to anger, pleasures and boldness attained the Kshatriya Varna, those who were inclined to cattle rearing and living off the plough attained the Vaishyas, those who were fond of violence, covetousness and impurity attained the Shudras. The Brahmin class is modeled in the epic, as the archetype default state of man dedicated to truth, austerity and pure conduct. Indeed, it goes on to assert that all men are children of Brahmins, which does not make sense, unless understood this way, in the Mahabharata and pre-medieval era Hindu texts, according to Hiltbeitel. It is important to recognize, in theory, Varna is non-genealogical. The four Varnas are not lineages, but categories. The Bhagavad Gita describe the professions, duties, and qualities of members of different Varnas. There is no entity on earth, or again in heaven among the Devas, that is devoid of these three gunas, born of Prakriti. Of Brahmanas and Kshatriyas and Vaishyas, as also of Sudras, O scorcher of foes, the duties are distributed according to the gunas born of their own nature. The control of the mind and the senses, austerity, purity, forbearance, and also uprightness, knowledge, realization, belief in a hereafter these are the duties of the brahmanas, born of their own nature. Prowess, boldness, fortitude, dexterity, and also not flying from battle, generosity and sovereignty are the duties of the kshatriyas, born of their own nature. Agriculture, cattle rearing and trade are the duties of the Vaishyas, born of their own nature, and action consisting of service is the duty of the Sudras, born of their own nature. <laughs> Varna in Buddhist texts 
Ancient Buddhist texts mention Varna system in South Asia, but the details suggest that it was a non-rigid, flexible and with characteristics devoid of features of a social stratification system. Maurice Walsh, a German scholar and translator of Diga Nikaya, provides a discussion between Gautama Buddha and a Hindu Brahmin named Sonadanda who was very learned in the Vedas. Gautama Buddha asks in Diga Nikaya, according to the Theravada Pali text translation by Walsh, by how many qualities do Brahmins recognize another Brahmin? How would one declare truthfully and without falling into falsehood? I am a Brahmin? Sonadanda initially lists five qualities as he is of pure descent on both the mother's and the father's side, he is well versed in mantras, he is of fair color handsome and pleasing, he is virtuous learned and wise, and he is the first or second to hold the sacrificial ladle. Buddha then asks the Brahmin, If we omit one of these qualities you just listed, could not one be still a true Brahmin? Sonadanda, one by one, eliminates fair color and looks, then eliminates varna in which one was born, and then eliminates the ability to recite mantra and do sacrifices as a requirement of being a Brahmin. Sonadanda asserts that just two qualities are necessary to truthfully and without falling into falsehood identify a Brahmin, these two qualities are, being virtuous and being learned and wise. Sonadanda adds, states Walsh, that it is impossible to reduce the requirement for being a Brahmin any further, because, for wisdom is purified by morality, and morality is purified by wisdom, where one is, the other is, the moral man has wisdom and the wise man has morality, and the combination of morality and wisdom is called the highest thing in the world. Brian Black and Dean Patton state Sonadanda admits after this. We Brahmins only know this much Gautama, it would be well if Reverend Gautama would explain meaning of the two morality, wisdom. Peter Maysfield, a Buddhism scholar and ancient Pali texts translator, states that during the Nikaya texts period of Buddhism 3rd century BC to 5th century AD, Varna as a class system is attested, but the described Varna was not a caste system. The Pali texts enumerate the four Varnas Brahman, Kshatriya. Vesa Vaishaya and Sutta Shudra. Maysfield notes that people in any varna could in principle perform any profession. The early Buddhist texts, for instance, identify some Brahmins to be farmers and in other professions. The texts state that anyone, of any birth, could perform the priestly function, and that the Brahmin took food from anyone, suggesting that strictures of commensality were as yet unknown. The Nikaya texts also imply that endogamy was not mandated in ancient India. Maysfield concludes. If any form of caste system was known during the Nikaya period, and it is doubtful that it was, this was in all probability restricted to certain non-Aryan groups. <laughs> Varna in Jaina texts Adi Purana, an 8th century text of Jainism by Jinasena, is the earliest mention of Varna and Jati in Jainism literature. Jinasena does not trace the origin of Varna system to Rigveda or to Purusha Sukta, instead traces Varna to the Bharata legend. According to this legend, Bharata performed an ahimsa test, test of non-violence, and those members of his community who refused to harm or hurt any living being were called as the priestly Varna in ancient India, and Bharata called them Dvija, twice born. Jinasena states that those who are committed to ahimsa are Deva Brahmanas, divine Brahmins. The text Adi Purana also discusses the relationship between Varna and Jati. According to Padmanabh Jaini, a professor of Indic studies, Jainism and Buddhism, the Adi Purana text states, There is only one Jati called Manusya Hati or the human caste, but divisions arise account of their different professions. The Varna of Kshatriya arose when Rishabh procured weapons to serve the society and assumed the powers of a king, while Vaishya and Shudra Varna arose from different means of livelihood in which they specialized. <laughs> Varna in Sikh texts Sikhism is a late 15th century religion that originated in the Punjab region of the Indian subcontinent. Sikh texts mention Varna as Varan, and Jati as Zat or Zat Biradari. 
Eleanor Nesbitt, a professor of religion and specializing in Christian, Hindu and Sikh studies, states that the Varan is described as a class system in 18th to 20th century Sikh literature, while Zat reflected the endogamous occupational groups caste. The Sikh texts authored by the Sikh gurus and by non-Sikh bhagats such as the Namdev, Ravidas and Kabir, states Nesbitt, declared the irrelevance of Varan or Zat of one's birth to one's spiritual destiny. They taught that all of humanity had a single refuge and that the divine teaching is for everyone. Sikhism teaches a society without any varan. In practice, states Harjit Abaroy, secondary Sikh texts such as the Khalsa Dharam Sastar in 1914 argued that the entry of certain Sikh castes into major Sikh shrines should be barred. Similarly, in practice and its texts, the gurus of Sikhism did not condemn or break with the convention of marrying and marrying their children within the jati, and all the Sikh gurus were Khatri, had Khatri wives and practiced arranged marriages within their zat. According to Davin, the Rahit Namas and other prescriptive Sikh texts from mid-18th century onwards accommodate and affirm the natal and marriage traditions of different caste groups within the Sikh community. Ravidasi Sikhs and Ramgariya Sikhs follow their own textual and festive traditions, gather in their own places of worship. These are Varan-based caste-based religious congregations that emerged from Sikhism, states Nesbitt. The Ravidashiya group, for example, emphasizes the teachings of Bhagat Ravidas, a poet saint born in a family whose traditional untouchable occupation related to dead animals and leather. They consider the teachings of living gurus and the texts of Ravidas Dara as sacred and spiritually as important as the historic Sikh gurus. This is rejected by Khalsa Sikhs. The disagreements have led the Ravidashiya Sikhs to launch the Ravidashiya religion movement which, amongst other things seeks to replace the Guru Granth Sahib in their Gurdwaras with the texts of Ravidas. <laughs> Varna and Jati The terms varna theoretical classification based on occupation and jati caste are two distinct concepts. Jati community refers to the thousands of endogamous groups prevalent across the subcontinent. A jati may be divided into exogamous groups based on the same gatras. The classical authors scarcely speak of anything other than the varnas, even Indologists sometimes confuse the two. See also Topic References Topic Further reading Ambedkar, B. R. nineteen forty six Who were the Shudras? Alain Danielou, nineteen seventy six Les Catra Sens de la Vie, Paris Sri Aurobindo, nineteen seventy The Human Cycle, The Ideal of Human Unity, War and Self Determination, Sri Aurobindo Ashram Trust, ISBN eight one seven oh five eight two eight one four Hardcover, ISBN eight one seven oh five eight oh one four five Paperback Kane, Pandurang Vaman, History of Dharmasastra, Ancient and Medieval, Religious and Civil Law. Pune, Bandarkar Oriental Research Institute, 1962 to 1975. G. S. Gurri, 1969. Caste and Race in India: Popular Precaution, Mumbai, 1969. Original print, 1932. Prabhat Ranjan Sarkar, 1967. Human Society 2. Ananda Marga Publications, Anandanagar, P. O. Baglada, Dist. Perulia, West Bengal, India. Ganshiam Shah, Caste and Democratic Politics in India, 2004 Welser, Albrecht, 1994. Credo, Quia Occidental, A Note on Sanskrit Varna and Its Misinterpretation in Literature on Mimamsa and Vyakarana. In, Studies in Mimamsa, Dr. Mandan Mishra Felicitation Volume edited by R. C. Dwivedi. Delhi, Mudalal Banarasidas. Lal, Vinay 2005, Introducing Hinduism, New York, Totem Books, pp. 132-33, ISBN 978-1-84046-626-3.